I apologize for all the self-censorship, but geez, this is a, a heavy topic. Um, but it's not. It's also not. Like, actually, enough, almost nothing has happened. This is just, this is just reactionary stuff. This is a community-supported legal education channel. Find out how you can support our mission at the links in the description below. You may have heard that Alex Jones was accused of sending illegal content in the form of, like, PDFs embedded with images of underage content trying to avoid using words that are going to get me arrested or a visit from the FBI. And then this got filed. Plaintiff's motion for review of a broadcast. The judge did not review the broadcast, but rather a transcript of the broadcast. And this was what the accusation was, basically. June 14th, which was a week ago Friday, Alex Jones broadcast two segments where he identified the opposing counsel in the Sandy Hook defamation case, Chris Matai, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. They identified him by name and showed a picture of him and falsely claimed that attorney Matai tried to frame Jones by planting illegal content in discovery materials produced by Jones, distorting what actually occurred in the discovery process and threatening attorney Matai and his Koskoff law firm. I think that's his law firm. It's, it's definitely a law firm in the case. This court has an obligation to protect the attorney's party's judicial process. Threats against counsel have been made on air to a very large audience. Plaintiffs therefore request the court review the video in advance of tomorrow's hearing. Plaintiffs intend to move to seek specific relief on an expedited basis. They link to the video here. I'm not sure if the video is still up on YouTube, but here's what I did for you. I want you to understand how seriously I take this channel and my duties to you, my lawful masses. I went and watched the Alex Jones show for you. I probably, I probably ended up donating some brain cells. I'm very sorry for the uh, the short recovery period that I'll have in in recovering my my intelligence. But I did watch the Alex Jones show to see what this was all about, and I wanted to report what I saw with my own eyes and heard with my own ears. So first, I wanna give some kudos to Alex Jones's attorney. I don't know his, which, which attorney was sitting next to him in that, during that show, but the attorney showed remarkable restraint and, and really did a good job of trying to keep his client from Thelma and Louising it off the ledge. Um, Alex Jones was very upset at the new accusation and of course, we all know that in Alex Jones's divorce documents, his one of his affidavits or, or depositions, he said that this all this is all an act. So we we really can't tell whether he's really upset or whether it's just acting upset. So please take that with all with a grain of salt. But Alex Jones was really upset that he was accused of including illegal content in the form of images of underage people in intimate situations that is highly illegal. Words that we only want to say on YouTube and Twitch because they trigger bots and, and, you know, who knows what gets removed these days. And I've already said the words Alex Jones enough that, that I'm probably been demonetized to the moon. The accusation was that Alex Jones had sent this illegal material to opposing counsel. And then Alex Jones starts to rant about wanting to find the people who, who sent him the content because where the content came from is, is discovery games, is gamesmanship or, or maybe even unethical gamesmanship in, in the discovery process. What, what's happened here is there's the Sandy Hook defamation lawsuit. Alex Jones is being accused of repeating false statements that he knew were false and repeating them probably with actual malice, although I'm not sure that has to be proven in a defamation case against a private individual such as a victim of Sandy Hook. Alex Jones is accused of repeating defamatory and false statements, and I don't need to go over them here. They're truly egregious statements, um, basically like denying that the thing ever happened. And you can imagine, I, I've, I've witnessed a friend who lost their young child and it was devastating 
to the community. It was devastating to the child. It happened slowly with cancer, so that was harsh. Um, but it was also, once the child had passed, still devastating to the entire community. So for Alex Jones to question for fun and profit, the grief of these parents, you know, it was is, is egregious, assuming that that's what happened. And I'll let the jury decide if that's what happened. We already have a summary judgment ruling against the publisher of the book that Alex Jones was relying on. It was not authored by Alex Jones, but Alex Jones relies on, well, this was the book that I got it all from, so it's their fault. So there's a lawsuit, and Alex Jones has to respond to discovery requests in the lawsuit. What is discovery? Discovery is either a fishing expedition or a legitimate court procedure, depending on your perspective. It is the re revelation turning over of relevant information upon request only has to be done upon request or if it's or there's some discovery that's under the rules as well you turn over relevant information whether that information is good for you bad for you whatever if you have it in your possession you must turn it over well why the heck would i turn over information that's against my my case well that's part of the procedure if you've gotten a lawsuit against you the Filing of that lawsuit sort of cuts off any destruction of that data, and you can now get at that data. And if you've destroyed that data, a lawyer can go into court and say, hey, they destroyed the data, judge. You can assume that that data said what we, the plaintiff, the opposing party, wants it to say. You know, in the case of piracy cases like I do, if a client has destroyed evidence, the judge will assume they pirated the material. Um, in this case, if if Alex Jones doesn't turn over material that the plaintiff says proves defamatory statements were made or defamatory intent or malicious intent or something, the judge can assume malicious intent or assume that those things are true. So Alex Jones and his attorneys get a request. Please turn over all emails that discuss Sandy Hook the case, defamation, the book, etc. They're going to have a whole list of all the things they want, and then they're going to have a whole list of definitions to make sure nobody can weasel out. You know, oh, you said document. This is an email. So they're going to say document includes email and yada, yada, yada. So sometimes when people who receive discovery requests want to be jerks, they'll respond with something different or something extra. Uh, maybe the request will be for all emails and they'll respond with all the emails printed out uh, one-sided pages one page per email even if the email is very short or something and then all of that will be put in bankers boxes and 200 bankers boxes will be delivered at your door and well, what are you supposed to do now now you got to go page through 200 pages or you got to pay for a service to you know or a person to scan everything you do what I do I have a scanner downstairs and I just I plug the scanner and my laptop in front of the TV and I get a beer and we have a little scanning party for six hours and we watch three movies while we scan all the pages. It's a pain in the butt. So what happened here was one of those games. Alex Jones's attorneys turned over just a raw dump of all of his email. Just, you know, go on the email server, you know, click and drag, select all, archive it, send it on a hard drive or send it via whatever. So 50,000 emails or something like that were just collected and dumped because it's your problem now. Well, in there were spam emails and other emails that were sent to Alex Jones. And you can imagine, and, and from all I've been able to see, this appears to be what happened. Someone sent Alex Jones a PDF that contained this illegal content, this under underage material. And if Alex Jones had opened that, maybe he'd be shocked or maybe he'd have to report it to the FBI, you know, and that's just a hassle to him. But this stuff gets filtered out. So it's like sitting in your spam folder or something like that. Or maybe you just know better than to open on attachments that you didn't unrequested attachments or maybe you just know you know hey pdfs and and docx files and things you know just don't open those unless we expect it that's what i'm talking about so he didn't open it allegedly and there is no evidence to think that alex jones had anything to do with the underage illegal material so 
that dump then gets sent to the plaintiff's attorneys who pass it on to their forensic examiners. And the forensic examiners use some very sophisticated equipment like NCASE, E-N-C-A-S-E, or uh, Axiom from Magnet Forensics. Um, I used to use Internet Evidence Finder before I decided that it was just easier to turn this over to actual experts than to try and become the expert myself. And it finds everything. It finds snippets of videos. It finds snippets of pictures. It finds uh, metadata, everything. And none of that was done on any of this data before Alex Jones sent it to opposing counsel. So there is a lot of evidence that this is a huge gamesmanship thing. This is discovery jerkiness being pulled on the part of Alex Jones's lawyers, because what else are you going to do? They don't, you know, they don't really have some, any further great arguments in the case. They either committed defamation or not. I don't even know what the argument is, so I'm not saying it's strong or not strong. I'm saying we don't know, and so they're still playing these games. And then in playing these games, they sent illegal underage material to opposing counsel. Well, Alex Jones's response is that somehow the opposing counsel must have planted this information or must have some sort of unfair advantage because they can find it. And they're look, look at how bad it is. Look at what they're doing to Alex Jones because they put the the underage, I almost said it, the underage material in there for them to find and then to hurt Alex Jones more and all that. And he started off with a $100,000 bounty on proving whoever put this in the in the email. And then it was up to a million dollar bounty and he's being for real. He's trying to tell his lawyer, this is a real thing. You, you catch the person who did this. While simultaneously really kind of implying that they really thought that it was the law firm the opposing counsel law firm that did it, mixing up the two. Well, that all came out to the judge, and this document got filed explaining that the segment was used and, and all these things were said, and and here's a quote. Uh, actually, I don't even want to show the quote because it's got, it's got the words in it. I'm so sorry. I, I'm trying so hard to keep myself on YouTube. <laughs> I apologize for all the self-censorship, but geez, this is a, a heavy topic. Um, but it's not. It's also not. Like, actually, enough, almost nothing has happened. This is, just, this is just reactionary stuff. And that's what they want. They want you to react by watching their videos and giving them ads and buying Alex Jones' supplements. And that's, we're not going to do any of that, right? Nobody's going to go buy Alex Jones' supplements. Don't even know why I have to say that. So, uh, just, okay, a little bit of background. Um, I have been... Um, twice now asked to assist with training government officials on abused children and such and such. Uh, and again, I don't want to go into too much detail with this. Uh, it is a human trafficking is a serious, serious issue and should be given all the respect and credibility and weight in the world. Um, it really does happen. It happens right under our noses. Uh, it happens, you know, as innocently as you might. You might just think that a person's with another, that a child's with another person, and realize and then not realize that that person is actually acting as a as a, a sort of host for uh, human trafficking situations. So, a very serious situation. Uh, this is not that. This is this is somebody trying to mess with Alex Jones, and and it it, it blowing up. So, to conclude the story, the opposing counsel, or, or rather the plaintiff's counsel, asked the judge to review all of this. The judge held an immediate hearing, like literally four days later or something, almost almost the next day after the, the request was made. And the the at the hearing, apparently, Alex Jones was more or less sanctioned for what he said, he was denied his requests to dismiss the case or for summary judgment just as part of the sanction. Later that week, the summary judgment motion against and in, in favor of the plaintiffs and against the author of the book came down uh, and that summary judgment motion was, uh, was, was um, granted in favor of the plaintiffs. 
So now Alex Jones is basically going to be on his back foot. He has to face trial on this. And that's the show that I'm looking forward to. Uh, I don't mean looking forward to the, 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 the victims of this. It's absolutely horrific what he's doing, but, but Alex Jones deserves whatever he gets out of this. And I, and I hope he get, really gets hit hard because this is the, the worst of the worst is trying to profit off of this kind of disaster. It wasn't even a natural disaster. It's one, one thing, at least you understand why some people would try to profit off a natural disaster, but they're the lowest of the low. And then he doubles down and does something even lower by attacking the Sandy Hook victims which was a uh, intentional act of a of a deranged person. So it's just just just, just yeah. it's just, I just can I go take a shower now before we do the next story please. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that happened and and so it's not as bad as it, as as everybody thinks. It was more or less some troll sent something to Alex and then Alex tried to dump his email on opposing counsel and then opposing counsel found the illegal underage material and cried foul and the judge sanctioned Alex Jones after Alex Jones ranted that this was all done by opposing counsel maybe and we want a million dollar bounty to find the person who did it. But it maybe was opposing counsel, but but we also need to find the actual person. But maybe it was opposing counsel. So, you know, yeah. Um, I did have a, a question that I've seen Please. raised on Twitter. So in in your opinion, do you think that Alex Jones's counsel um was maybe negligent in their in their duties when they let um this copious amount of information like go to the plaintiffs without reviewing it at all first? You should review it. Um, if it was at the direction of the client, if the client was on board, in other words, if Alex Jones was saying, no, I'm not going to pay you to go through all of that. It's going to cost thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, send it on over, just dump it on them. If the client's saying to do that, yeah, it's pretty much on the client. The lawyer's not supposed to do illegal things, but I can't say it's illegal to give too much information in response to discovery. Um, yeah, you could probably get sanctioned. I think you can make an argument that that the dumping too much information on them is the is also the opposite of of producing the requested discovery. But um, I don't think it's going to be automatically like illegal for the for the attorney to to do what the client said in that particular case. If the attorneys did it without his knowledge or whatever and and didn't talk to him about, hey, don't say stuff on your on your show about this. But when you you watch this segment, his attorney is actually not jumping on him to get him to stop saying things, but just calling for moderation on, on those accusations that the opposing counsel had anything to do with it. And um, very appropriate, actually. I was very impressed with his uh, with his attorney. Even though I don't always, I I don't always agree that I would represent somebody like an Alex Jones. Like, I guess kudos to the Mark Randazes of the world who can represent Alex Jones and and do a good job and should, as as that's how the legal system is supposed to function. Uh, I just I stop myself. Like I'm, I just I ask myself like if Alex Jones called you tomorrow and said I need to represent me. I'd, I'd politely decline. I don't think I'd be mean about it. I don't want my professional image to be that I'm mean to people, even if even if I don't disagree with them. But uh, I, I would decline. That's a lot of drama. <laughs> yeah. So that is our show, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, dog lap sitting attorney on your stream here. And uh, you are my lawful masses, and I really appreciate all of your support on patreon.com slash ljfrench and sponsus.org slash law. We have our short URL now, so thank you very much for that. Uh, at the $50 level, thank you very much to our supporters for the month of June. John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negre, Daniel Perez, Aspernari, and Snorri Wazatsky. And thank you to the $5 plus supporters that are scrolling on the LED panel behind me and will be in the description uh, below. So that is our show. We'll leave some time for the editor to put some, uh, some more outro video here because we like to share. So love you all. Have a great week. And I'll see you on the next stream, hopefully with Kaylee. And, uh, and we'll have a good time there too. So love you. Have a good day. Bye.